The thing that I didn't realize um, was how horribly codependent that I was with my ex-husband and I didn't, I wasn't wanting to face what a horrible narcissistic person he was and how that I honestly didn't really matter to him. And I really needed to know why. And <laughs> I, I look back now and I realize that I was lucky to get out with my life because my one of my best friends didn't and uh, her husband is very similar to mine very chauvinistical very entitled narcissistic and he killed her in the house with the children he shot her um, when they're going through the divorce and the separating of the assets in the home and everything and he just believed everything was his and he was just as controlling and manipulated with with the money and the assets and the marriage and, and, and everything. So, I mean, I'm lucky that I got out with my life because my friend didn't. Um, I, I was reading this book, The Spiritual Divorce by Debbie Ford, and I actually wrote a divorce diary. I have a lot of diaries, so it chronicles everything, trying to make sense of everything. I'm a writer and that's what I do. Um, and then I went to, to fairway divorce because I thought, well, this will be fair and this will be amicable and they'll make everything great. And well, I was obviously incredibly naive, incredibly naive, um, too kind, too nice, too sensitive, too sweet. And that's why narcissists love people like me. And that's how people like me get eaten up in a system because we're taking advantage of because we have kind hearts. It's like... And when you're talking about spirituality, when you're a very spiritual person and you are very angelic in a way, the world will chew you up and spit you out because it's not of that energy. It's a low energy. Um, so, you know, my I look back now and I see how my husband um, was, was intentionally making me suicidal, telling me to commit suicide. He set everything up as soon as he decided that he'd used me up um, and that it was time to discard me because that's what narcissists do and to find another woman who would put up with his shit because I was becoming aware of it. He had to discard me because the game was up. It's all a game. So he started setting everything up. It's so manipulative. It's so evil um, to take the business accounts away to force me to file for bankruptcy while I was pregnant and I couldn't fight fight with him to pay my student loans and force that that on me to start having an affair um that were it was it started as emotional affairs with other women and it went to a full on affair um to start to break me down. I started to lose my health. My sister died from a brain tumor. Um you know, geez, I wonder why I got depressed, right? Because he was pushing me to that, pushing me to that so he could use it as an excuse and blame everything on me so he wouldn't be held accountable. So he could look like the victim on the outside to every everyone else. Um, so he easily could have made it look like a suicide, Um if I'd have stayed in the family home and I felt that was coming, I felt that was happening. I just knew that he could do something to me in our country home, um, out of t out of town, with no one there, um, and make it look like a suicide because he'd set me up to that. He'd actually pushed me into going in, into putting myself in the hospital into getting counseling into getting as much help as I could and he could have set it up to look like that and I felt like that was coming um, so it's a good thing I did move out of the family home and get my own place and he even assaulted me in my own place um, and if and I, I purposely went into townhouses so that there were people around me so that I had witnesses so that he couldn't hurt me um, and unfortunately um, my girlfriend wasn't that uh, wasn't that lucky and she didn't take it uh, seriously enough, which I started to do and to see what, what he was doing and what, what, was, what was coming. So 
where attention goes, energy flows, where energy flows, attention goes. So if I continue to battle him in court, um, I will be basically stuck in this continual tug of war with him. And by keeping me occupied in that tug of war with him for the assets and to be fighting in court, I won't be finding happiness and getting on with my own life. That is the, the whole thing is that um, if he can't have me, narcissists are like that, then no one can have me. And that's his, in, that's his intention. Um, and when I look at Debbie Ford and, I, and I, I go back and I'm looking at snippets of her book and reading my diary and stuff like that, I realize that she was codependent. She was very much like me. She was a, a true empath um, who was codependent, um, too loving and too trusting. Um, and that, that book is really a book for for empaths who are codependent to read, to stay in that codependence, to stay in that unhealthiness, to kind of stay in the mirage, you know, stay up in the clouds and the castle in the clouds and, and think that you can have this lovely little spiritual divorce with a narcissist. No, you cannot. That's not the reality. The reality of it is, is that you have to set very extreme boundaries up with a narcissist. You have to really see what they are really about to save your life, to get on with your life, to get control back into your life and to learn and to take, to, to take responsibility for where your codependency was and to sort of take off the rose colored glasses and look at life um, for what it is and for people for who they really truly are. And that's the problem with um, um, empaths that are codependent is that we really don't want to see that there are, there are people that are like the big bad wolves. There are people that are really brutal, that are really in that reptilian thinking, that they are really in that dog eat dog um, kill or be killed um, way of thinking and way of being and way of living um, their, their lives. So the best thing you can do as an empath is to recognize your codependency, take responsibility for it, and see that it's not up to you to save or change anyone or to be the good person um, and to take the fallout for people who are bad, but to drop them, to not feel guilty, to see them for what they are. And that way, um, you're not going to be prone to becoming um, a victim of a narcissist again in your future and to keep attracting them in your life when you take responsibility um, for the fact that you weren't willing to see the reality of the situation because not everybody else is going to be angelic and spiritual and live in that reality. There are people out there that are incredibly brutal and to see them is to be able to fight them and to, and, and to conquer that and move on and set up boundaries, shield yourself from it and protect yourself from it.